response. So I'm talking about Times. Uh, I'm joined by Owen Hinchi, who is the CEO and founder at Times. Uh, so thanks, Owen, for making the time today from your busy schedule. Uh, so why don't we start with a brief introduction and showcase your solution set? Of course. Thank you so much, Nani. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, hi, everyone. As you heard, my name is Owen Hinchy. I am founder of Tynes. Uh, before founding Tynes about three years ago, I spent about 15 years working in primarily technical security roles in enterprise security teams in companies like eBay, PayPal, and DocuSign. Um, and Tynes was really born out of a frustration for a lack of a really powerful, flexible security automation platform. So I was running a SOC with about 35 people, um, and we looked at about a dozen different security automation platforms that would help our team automate their response to repetitive manual tasks without having to write code. We couldn't find anything that came close to our requirements, so really found it times to build that platform that we wished had been available when we ran security teams, just like many of you guys are running today. Um, and that is a security automation platform that will allow anyone automate any repetitive workflow, regardless of complexity and regardless of use case. Um, Janani touched on these three problems a little bit, but I thought I would delve into it a little bit more. So over the course of my career in security, there were three problems that I consistently came across. I'll touch on each one. The first is that there's just way too much work. Uh, as Janani said, you know, the average security team is now receiving about 10,000 alerts a day. I like this statistic that 79% of teams are overwhelmed with the volume of alerts they receive. Um, I mainly like it because I really want to know what the other 21% are doing to not feel overwhelmed. Because I've genuinely never met a team who were looking in all the right places, who had all the tools turned on at a sufficient level who weren't overwhelmed. There's just so much work. It's really, really challenging. Um, the second problem is that there's not enough staff. You know, we've all heard the figures around unfulfilled security jobs by the year 2023. I tend to take those numbers with a pinch of salt, but what I do know is, based on experience, it used to take us between six and nine months to hire a senior security engineer. Uh, we'd hire that person, compensate them really well, and then have them doing the same repetitive tasks over and over again. Things like responding to EDR alerts or running down phishing emails or triaging bug bounty reports. And these people would just get burned out and they would churn and they would go somewhere else. And then the third problem is this sense of inevitable incidents. So I was the lead incident responder on several headline making security incidents over the course of my career. So I have firsthand experience and knowledge of the fact that you can be doing everything right. You can be looking in all the right places, have all the right things turned on and still get unlucky. The reason we found at times is because we genuinely believe that a really good answer, not the only answer, right? There's no silver bullets, but a really good answer to all three of these problems is advanced contextually aware security automation implemented by frontline security teams. And that's what we're trying to do at times. Next slide, please. So if you're familiar with other SOAR platforms, um, I wanted to talk briefly about how times is different. So there's three ways that we differentiate ourselves. The first is focus. So if you talk to Gartner or Forrester or somebody like that, they will tell you that SOAR is workflow automation, chatter collaboration, threat intelligence, and some sort of, sort of ticket management. With Tynes, we just do workflow automation, and we do it really, really well. So no chat, no threat intel, no ticket management. Instead, we just make it super easy for you to integrate with those existing tools in your stack. The second way we're different then is in usability. And this is probably the most important thing I'm gonna say all day. And if there was just one thing that I could get you guys to take away from this call, it'd be this. Automation, enterprise automation is only effective. And I mean only effective when it's implemented by teams on the front line. It can't be implemented by developers. It can't be software engineers who sit in a different team. It has to be the folks who are doing the work on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's analysts, responders, threat hunters and um, vol managers, right? Not software engineers. And so Tynes is specifically designed to be implemented by teams on the front line. You do not have to be a software engineer. You do not have to be a developer to get value from Tynes. And then the third way we're different is flexibility. So Tynes is going to work with any tool in your stack. We are 100% vendor agnostic. And the way Tynes works is you take the process you want to automate, you break it into individual steps, and you'd apply one of our six or seven building blocks to automate that step. Next slide, please. 
Um, in terms of our customers, so as you'll see on the slide here, we have everything from Fortune 10s to public and private SaaS companies to startups and everything in between. We tend to see time to value in less than 24 hours. Um, the average number of production automation use cases for a Times customer is 20. If you've been using the platform for over a year, that number goes to 30. Uh, and we have several customers who, who have over 100 production automation use cases, saving them literally hundreds of hours a week. Um, what's really interesting about this, and one of the reasons we're so excited about this partnership with CrowdStrike, is about 50% of our customers today are using Tynes with CrowdStrike. So we have years of experience working with the world's leading security teams, helping them automate response to CrowdStrike and interaction with CrowdStrike. So we've essentially taken that, taken that knowledge, distilled it, and made it available out of the box through the Tynes app in the CrowdStrike store. Next slide, please. Okay, this will be the last slide I show you guys before we hop into the demo. Um, so the way Times works with the CrowdStrike store is when you sign up for Times through the partner panel in your CrowdStrike Falcon dashboard, we will immediately provision you a community edition Times tenant. The community edition tenants are free, fully featured versions of Times that do not expire. So you will be able to continue automating interaction with CrowdStrike forever at no cost. So after about 30 seconds, with no clicks, or sorry, with just clicks, no code, you will be automating interaction with CrowdStrike. When you sign up for the CrowdStrike uh, Times app, we will automatically provision your tenant to include a number of automated workflows that are designed to start uh, automating interaction with CrowdStrike. So we will enrich the detections from CrowdStrike. When we find a real threat, we will send you an email and we will allow you to provide interaction um, and automation response through ORT or, 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 or scripts uh, via those emails and notifications. Okay, so if I can take control here, I'll just hop into a quick demo. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the Tynes storyboard. So at the heart of everything we do in Tynes is the concept that any process, regardless of whether it's security, HR, recruiting, vol management, employee onboarding, can be broken down and automated using just seven types of actions. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, the technology stack that you're automating interaction with, it can all be automated using just these seven action types. So it doesn't matter if your workflow you're building is as complex as something like this, which contains several hundred automated actions, or if it's something really, really simple like receive alert and quarantine device. So the storyboard then is a collection of actions. And those actions perform individual steps within your workflow. So when you sign up for times through the CrowdStrike store, you're going to be receive a tenant with this automated workflow that looks something like this. And we can see the individual steps. So the individual steps here, all these boxes are the actions that you're taking in times. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to run on a schedule and find new detections in CrowdStrike. This is made even easier now with the addition of the notification workflows that Julian just demoed. So instead of actually having to go and fetch those, um, fetch those detections, you can just drag a webhook action onto your storyboard, take this URL here, and paste it into your CrowdStrike Falcon and receive automatic notification with that additional uh, context that, that Julian was, was discussing earlier on. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get those detections. Then we're going to start analyzing the detections um, using various enrichment sources. So again, with times, we're 100% founder agnostic. We don't care what technology stack you're using. So if you want to enrich those alerts with things like virus total or URL scan or other sandbox technology like Strike Falcon, you can absolutely do that with times. By default, however, we're just going to send you an email. And I can show you what that email looks like. I just go in here, I'm just going to re-emit an event. So when Times receives an event, it is going to propagate it through our story here. And by the time we get down here, we'll see that we have send security email. If I go to my inbox, I'll see that a couple of seconds ago, I received this alert from CrowdStrike. 
and I can see that this CrowdStrike alert is related to a detection on this host name, this OS. So we're building this alert in times, and you can modify it and change it any way you want. We have some very basic information, the kind of information that you would typically receive and expect to receive directly from CrowdStrike, the user that was associated with it, any hashes, uh, IOC values, and so on. Nothing too exciting there, right? What's really interesting about Tynes, however, and this whole Better Together story, a important part of it is these response actions. So you can see here in every single one of these emails, I've got two options. And I can contain this device in CrowdStrike or I can analyze Chrome extensions. So let's press this contain this device in CrowdStrike. What will happen is I will go straight, straight back to CrowdStrike, or sorry, straight back to Tynes with this alert. If I go to my story, I'll see that these actions have now emitted events and I've automatically contained the device in CrowdStrike with an RT or script. In addition to that, if I wanted to do some additional context collection, I could analyze Chrome extensions. And this is a, um, an RT or action that is just designed to work with times through the App Store and CrowdStrike. So this is not an RT or script that you will get out of the box. It's something that we have written in partnership with CrowdStrike. So if I press here, what'll happen in my story? is that this guy has now emitted an event and I'm going to go and find all the Chrome extensions included on that endpoint uh, via an RTR script that's automatically deployed when you sign up for Tynes. Now, the real power of Tynes is the flexibility and the usability of this tool. So you, again, do not have to be a developer to get value from this tool. And remember, when you're responding to incidents uh, and in a, in a very kind of high pressure environment, context is going to be king. And a lot of times that context is not stored in CrowdStrike. It could be stored in your directory provider or your asset manager or your HR system, right? You may want to know if the person who's triggering this alert is actually an employee. So at times, let's say I wanted to modify this story slightly to find additional information about my user in Okta. So all I'd have to do is I go Okta profile. here, I will find a template action for uh, searching a user profile by email address and opt -in. All I'd have to do is drag this onto the page, take this, connect it up, and wire it in. And now I'm going to, as part of this process, find the additional information about the user and opt -in. Once I have all that information, I can then make a more granular decision. So I can say, you know what? Actually, this user is based in engineering. They've got access to production. So I'm going to quarantine the device automatically without actually updating the, updating the user or requiring interaction. In addition, this story that comes out of the box in Tynes also includes, um, includes language that allows you to connect to your existing case management system. So if you want to start adding these tickets to JIRA, you can do something like JIRA issue. And you'll find a template for so create or create a new issue in Jira. All you would do is drag it onto the storyboard, drop it in there, connect it up, and you would configure your HTTP action to do whatever you want. So here I've got the Jira domain for my basic auth. For the description, I want to include information from here. So I would do something simple like new credit. Just like that, Times is then automatically going to go and create a JIRA issue for every single detection that meets certain criteria that it receives from CrowdStrike. Also, as part of this, we have what we call story runs. And story runs tells you an exact audit trail of everything that has happened for every alert that you receive in CrowdStrike. So, for example, here's all the alerts that we got in CrowdStrike. Here's the information related to those individual alerts. Here's what happened when we sent the email. Here's what happened when the user automatically responded. Here's what happened when we contained the device and so on and so forth. In addition, what we have is timestamps for all these actions. So I can say from when I detected the device to when the device was contained, let me just double click here so you can actually see this a little bit better. That was 25 events in 14 actions, it started at 5.34, finished at 5.33. So from the second that CrowdStrike detected that alert to when the device was quarantined or isolated from the network was about 2 minutes, 28 seconds. So really, really powerful, really quick and really flexible automation, allowing your team to refocus on higher impact activities like threat hunting, um, tuning detection logic, and so on. And that's it for times. That's yeah, it. That's it.
demo gods were with us because all three demos perfectly executed. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and I'd really like the points that uh, Tal and Owen, you both pointed out, which is we need data, we need it fast, and it needs to be contextual and enriched so that we are able to really accelerate SOC operations using the power of workflows and automations. So great job, uh, and thank you so much again for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule and uh, making sure that we are educating everyone as to how we are uh, improving SOC uh, response times using the latest uh, capabilities added by Falcon Platform and our store partners. So as we draw an end to this uh, presentation, I do want to leave you with a few key takeaways. Um, you should be demanding more from your security stack, whether it's real-time response or workflows or automation, there should be capabilities that really maximize your investment in any platform by providing different uh, use cases and different solution set without making sure, without basically bothering you with lots and lots of alerts. Uh, time is of essence when responding, and also you need your SOC teams to be really up to the challenge by not um, but like uh, burdening them with these ad additional alerts, millions of them, and then you ne also need to think about training them and making sure that they're effective from day one, uh, like Owen pointed out. Uh, so making sure that you're able to reach um, the alerts to the right analyst and in a timely manner will be helped with notification workflows that Julian talked about. Making sure that you're creating these to be consistent and scalable processes with our security automation and response piece that uh, Owen talked about with times is also critical. And you saw the impact that it has when you are able to respond to any of these alerts, quarantine any of the compromised hosts, and really do uh, tri triaging and remediation with haste. The last thing uh, is also making sure that uh, the vulnerability remediation is a key piece where there's like patch Tuesdays, there are things happening in your cyber hygiene that you need to take care of uh, with haste. So again, uh, making sure that you're working with vendors like Vulcan Cyber will be able to automate the whole process without any human intervention. So demanding more from your security stack, and we are there as part of CrowdStrike and CrowdStrike Store to make sure that you're successful in your journey during the SOC transformation. So with that, I'd like to thank my presenters for today and invite our audience to ask any questions now that you have experts who have spent time talking about the solution and showcasing it with a demo. Um, so if you want to learn more and you want to contact us, you could always reach out to us on store at crowdstrike.com or, or go to our website, www.crowdstrike.com slash store. Um, if you are a CrowdStrike customer, you can always check out our notification workflow plugins uh, through Slack, PagerDuty, and webhooks, and also check out our latest apps, Vulcan Cyber and Times from the store. So with that, um, it does draw an end to our presentation. I do invite you to use the Q&A box to ask any questions and check out our resources in the resource section if you need any additional information.